सो हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दिस इंटरव्यू और वाइवा क्वेश्चन आंसर सीरीज इन टू डेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू आंसर द फ्रिक्वेंटली आस्क क्वेश्चन दैट कैन इंडक्शन मोटर रन एट ए सिंक्रोन स्पीड एंड वॉट विल हैपन इफ इंडक्शन मोटर ट्राइज टू अचीव द सिंक्रोन स्पीड सो इन टू डेज वीडियो इन ऑर्डर टू आंसर दैट क्वेश्चन वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इंडक्शन मोटर अलॉन्ग विद दैट वी विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट वॉट इज रोटेटिंग मैग्नेटिक फील्ड हाउ द इंडक्शन मोटर रोटेट्स and after the understandings of all these questions we are going to answer this question and believe me when you complete this video you will have that confidence about induction motor and you can confidently answer this question so stay tuned we will meet after this intro <laughs> Okay so first of all we are going to understand the working principle of induction motor if you have observed the induction motor that induction motor runs on the principle of electromagnetic induction now what is this electromagnetic induction basically if you observe the law then it is saying that you need three things to have the induced emf first thing is the magnetic field second thing is the conductor and at the end you need the relative motion between the magnetic field and the conductor so in induction motor we are having two windings one is on the stator second is on the rotor now what we are doing in order to produce the magnetic field is we are giving the three phase supply to the stator now just imagine that here we are having the r and here we are having the r dash similarly we are having y y dash and b b dash so now when we give the supply let us assume that this r phase is at its maximum magnitude so the magnetic field that will produce in the r phase will be greater than the y phase and the b phase now after 120 degree y phase will come into the higher magnitude zone so the magnetic field produced by the y phase will be greater than the r phase and b phase and similarly after 120 degree b phase will be greater than the r and y phase now if you observe simultaneously what is happening first we are having the higher magnitude at r phase then y phase then b phase now if you continuously giving the supply you will observe that this magnetic field is rotating now this concept is known as the rotating magnetic field because we are supplying the three phase supply into the stator winding we are having the higher magnitude at r after 120 degree we are having the higher magnitude at y and then b phase and because of this it is reflecting as a rotating magnetic field and that is why it is known as the rotating magnetic field now if you are clear with the concept of rmf now let us talk about the rotor as you have understand that rotor is also having the conductor because there is a winding so in the stator after giving the supply we are having the magnetic field also we are having the second conductor in the rotor so we have the magnetic field we have the conductor so we have the two criteria and the third criteria that we needed in order to induce the emf is the relative motion and i have just explained you that because of giving the three phase supply into the stator you are having the rotating magnetic field so the third criteria that is the relative motion between the magnetic field and the conductor is basically achieved by having the rotating magnetic field so as the rotating magnetic field is rotating and the rotor conductors are stationary there will be the relative motion between those two and because of which the emf will get induced into the rotor conductors this induced emf is known as the rotor induced emf and because of this emf as the rotor conductors are the closed circuit the current will start flowing and this current is known as the rotor current as rotor current is flowing because of which a flux will come and that flux is known as the rotor flux and let us assume that the direction of the rotor conductor is going inside hence because of which the flux that we are getting is having the direction into the clockwise manner so at this moment let us assume that r phase having the higher magnitude because of which the stator flux is going from downward to the upward and the rotor flux is basically into the clockwise manner so now if you observe that in the left hand side the direction of the rotor flux and the stator flux are almost the same and in the right hand side the direction of the rotor flux and stator flux are cutting each other so the flux density into the left hand side compared to the right hand side will be higher and as this rotor flux and stator flux is interacting with each other the higher flux density area will try to interact with the right hand side and it will push the rotor into the right hand side and because of which there will be a mechanical movement into the rotor and because of this force the rotor will start rotating and this is the principle of operation for the induction motor so here you can observe that 
that there is two things that are rotating one is the magnetic field and second is the rotor magnetic field is basically arbitrary thing rotor is actually rotating now the speed at which the magnetic field is rotating is known as the synchronous speed and the speed at which the rotor is rotating that is known as the actual speed of the induction motor so if you have watched the video till this point you should have the clear cut idea that we are getting the rotation into the rotor because of the relative motion between the stator magnetic field and the rotor conductors. Now let us discuss the question that what will happen if induction motor will start rotating at synchronous speed. Now please pay your attention over here and understand this concept clearly. What is actually happening in the induction motor? We are getting the induced EMF because of the relative motion between the stator magnetic field and the rotor. Now just imagine if rotor is also rotating at the speed of the rotating magnetic field, the relative motion between the stator and the rotor will be zero. If the relative motion between the stator and rotor is zero, there will not be any induced EMF in the rotor and because of which there will not be any current and because of which there will not be any rotor flux. As there is no rotor flux, there is no mechanical force generated. Hence, if induction motor is try to achieving the synchronous speed, the induced EMF will get lower. And once the induced EMF will get lower, again the relative motion will come into the picture and because of this relative motion again the induced emf will get increased again the induction motor will try to achieve the synchronous speed and once it reaches to the synchronous speed relative motion will be zero and again the induced emf will be decreased and this process will continuous and finally we can say that induction motor cannot run at the synchronous speed so that is it about today's video i hope you have understand the point clearly and in this video i have tried to make all the things very simple if you are finding these kind of short videos very useful then please don't forget to hit a like comment and subscribe button this will actually motivate me to bring this kind of content regularly so i will meet you in the next video thank you